Hi folks, this is Jake with Tier 3 Tactical. Today we're going to be talking about some great research. We're going to be analyzing 1800 shootings and talking about which caliber has the best stopping power. Now, if you've looked anywhere on the internet, you'll see endless arguments about stopping power, which caliber you should use and what bullet and this and that. And after looking at this data, it's pretty clear that there really isn't any kind of magical round that's going to guarantee a stop. However, there are certain calibers that are much more likely to perform better than others. So this research is done by Greg Gallifritz over at Active Response Training, and it's linked below. Um, he examined 1,800 shootings over a 10-year period, taking hundreds if not thousands of hours to uh, collect the data and put it together to answer many of the same questions we're talking about. Um, what has the best chance of stopping an intruder? Um, are there any calibers that are clearly superior or clearly deficient? And how should we think about caliber stopping power, long guns and rifles? So let's get right into it. The first um, question we're going to talk about is what percentage of engagements were a one-shot stop? And we're going to look at this by caliber, okay? And this uh, first chart that you can see here uh, is actually done with a calculation. It's not exactly what you would think as one shot and then the person the person falls down. But to talk about um, what Greg defined a one shot stop is an assailant immediately ceasing to be violent, whether that's shooting or fight after the shot. If they were running, they had to drop within five feet. Um, and again, we're not talking about accidental shootings or suicides or anything like that. This particular metric is derived by taking a number of incapacitations, dividing it by the number of rounds the person received. Um, we're going to look at another one that might be a little bit more what you're looking for here. But the, the takeaways are bigger bullets are working better. Shotgun and rifle, obviously the highest. Here, 44 Magnum is slightly higher, actually. Um, and that is for probably a specific reason. If you notice that any caliber on here that is likely to be a revolver caliber has a slightly higher one-shot stop than you might think. And that's probably because you can't shoot a revolver as quickly. So if you only shot it once and the person decided to stop, whether that's psychologically or physical stop, then you know, you're know you looking at a higher probability, but it's probably not the same thing. You just don't find 44 Magnum semi-autos for the most part. So I wouldn't really say that that round is a higher probability than a rifle or shotgun. It's probably more of an artifact of the type of weapon that uses it. Next, let's look at the average number of rounds until incapacitation. Obviously, again, we're kind of looking at that um, shotgun and rifle having a lower uh, amount but that also is like a shotgun's a little bit slower to shoot than a nine millimeter auto so that's going to um, have a difference as well um, we can see nine millimeter actually is the highest amount of shots until incapacitation and I don't think it's because it's necessarily any um, any better or worse of a round I just think it's easier to shoot that quicker you have a generally a full-size handgun or a larger handgun with a lower recoiling round compared to a 40 Smith & Wesson or 45 ACP so you can shoot that quickly um, but the, Im the important thing to take from this is for popular self-defense rounds 38 special up to 45 ACP you're looking at between one and a half and 2.4 rounds before an assailant stops what they're doing it is interesting to note that the 22 caliber round is roughly the same as the centerfire round um, but again, this is probably more of a psychological stop where the person just doesn't want to be shot more rather than they physically are unable to keep uh, being violent. So take that one with a grain of salt. Now we're going to look at the percent of people that were actually incapacitated by one shot. This means they received one shot in the head or torso and they immediately stopped their violent action or fell to the ground if that was what they were doing. Here is probably the metric we're really looking at. Shotgun about 85 percent rifles right at 80 percent and then you know we're going down as we um, get to those common handgun calibers the spread here is pretty small there's roughly a 10 percent difference in normal handgun calibers and again if you look at that 32 caliber there were only 25 cases of that so we can't really say with any statistical certainty that that would be a better round i don't think it, it likely is you know whereas if you look at even the 357 Magnum or SIG, which is not that popular, there are several hundred cases of that. 9mm is like 400 cases of it. So if you're really interested in the details or how many cases, go hit that link below and you'll see 
um, exactly all that background data that you might be looking for. But a 10% difference in, in stopping power is not hugely significant. The main takeaway here is that long guns have much more uh, likelihood of incapacitating a target with only one shot. Another important metric to track is the amount of people that were not stopped no matter how many times they were shot. And that's going to give us kind of the uh, reverse look at this. So if we have uh, a good idea of what calibers might stop someone with one shot, what calibers don't stop people. And if you look at this chart, surprise, surprise, small calibers don't stop people. All the way down at the bottom of the 25 ACP is about a 35% chance. So really what we're saying here is in these kind of cases, if you're shot multiple times, then the assailant might continue to keep attacking. If we look up the rifle, that's like 8 or 9%. So um, it's also, you know, it does show you that regardless of what you see in the movies, there's a non you know, there's a non um, significant chance that no matter what you do or how successful you are in a, in a gunfight, they may keep going depending on their mental state, you know, maybe drugs or something that they're on, so we can't discount that. We're going to talk about that a little bit further on. Another interesting metric that Greg captured was the percentage of fatal hits. Um, this is of hits to a person's body, how many hits were in the head or torso. Otherwise, In other words, um, hits that were likely to be fatal. This is not capturing uh, the amount of rounds fired and then, uh, you know, how many hits there were as a percentage of that. So if, if they didn't hit the target at all, this wasn't captured. It's how many um, rounds were on the person and then how many were in that head and torso area. Shotgun and rifle, much more likely to be accurate. And then almost all of the um, pistol calibers are in the, like, 20 to 30% range. A few are a little higher, like the 357. Um, and a few are a little lower, like the 32 caliber. But you're looking at roughly if if you if the person was successful in hitting the target, you know, roughly like a third or 25 percent of those hits were in a fatal area for pistols. And then shotgun and rifles, you're looking at 65 percent, almost 70 percent for those. So obviously, it is much more uh, likely to hit a target with a long gun. The last metric we're going to talk about is accuracy by caliber. Now, this is important because, you know, some calibers may be much less accurate. So even if they did a great job of stopping a threat, uh, they may be very unlikely to actually hit the person. So if you can't hit them, then you're not going to stop them at all. So this is what this is looking at. This tracks the number of hits that are, again, in the head or torso. Um, to see if there's any real differences between calibers. And you can see from the data here that it's pretty close. Um, the accuracy for head and torso hits for shotgun and rifle pretty good. Again, the even pistol calibers are still pretty high. So uh, 70 to 80 percent is what we're looking at there. The lowest is that 25 caliber or 25 ACP, a little above 60 percent. So the accuracy isn't really an issue if we look at it divided by caliber. Um, smaller guns are generally harder to shoot more accurately, and that's probably some of the reason why you're seeing the smaller guns have a little less accuracy. It's just hard to shoot a very small mouse gun with any great degree of accuracy. We've looked at a lot of data, so let's talk about what this really means and what reasonable conclusions we might draw from this. First, I think it's important to highlight the fact that no matter what you're shooting, there's roughly a 10 to 15 percent chance that an assailant's not going to stop the attack no matter how much you shoot them or where you hit them. Um, that kind of is a big hole in most training. In most training that police or military or self-defense hits on target is like end of, the, end of the training drill. Done. You've done your job. Well, we probably need to consider what to do at that point. That's why a lot of military units and tactical units will do things like failure to stop drills, where you go for center mass hits, and then you take a aimed shot at the head or pelvic girdle. With the pelvic girdle, obviously, you're keeping them from moving for towards you. You can't walk with a broken pelvis. And with the head, that's obviously immediately incapacitating. So that might be something, if you're not training, that you need to be training. We also need to keep in mind that much of this data is ball ammo. I think there would be some differences if we had a lot of good quality data on hollow points. But remember, in a pistol caliber, a hollow point is just going to create a, a bigger permanent wound channel. You're not getting the cavitation effect that you would see on a rifle. So 
Yeah, I think there'd be some difference on pistol, but not a whole lot. And Greg mentioned there just wasn't enough data to really sp to make that kind of analysis. And lastly, I think if you choose any reasonable self-defense caliber for a pistol, 38 to 45 ACP, that's going to work. Um, it's just not that big of a difference. Um, a rifle is going to make a big difference. A shotgun is going to make a big difference. But having a 3 or 5% higher chance of stopping somebody with one shot isn't going to be as important as understanding your equipment and being able to use it effectively and accurately because shot placement matters. My final thoughts on the, the subject are, are, are very practical, I would say. If you want to become better at shooting for whatever reason, self-defense or you're in the military or police or whatever, you need to be around people that are good at doing the task you want to be good at. The best place to do that is get started shooting practical pistol shooting in USPSA. I'll put the link below for my guide to walk you step by step through it. But those are the best pistol shooters in the world. And if you want to get better, you need to go do that. You don't need fancy guns. You don't need a lot of equipment. You just need to have enough courage to get out there and do it. If you want to be able to defend yourself um, you know, out and about or your concealed carry guy or something like that, yes, you do need a, a, a pistol in a reasonable caliber. Mouse guns are probably not going to work. Um, but if you're defending your home and you're legally allowed to, I would recommend something like a um, carbine in a, in a reasonable rifle caliber. And I'll put a link below to uh, a review I did of the POF Renegade Plus. It's a 300 blackout. It's one of my favorite AR-15 pistols, so you can check that out as well. But something like that's going to clearly be much better than a small caliber pistol. But needless to say, as I mentioned above, training matters, putting rounds down range, and getting some quality of practice are things that really are truly going to matter. Not having the best ammo or the, the newest, coolest um, um, firearm out there. So now get out there and start training. <laughs>